Hey, hello, and welcome back to the final chapter of the series about this stylized house. In this video, I will uh, give a demo of how to present it on Sketchfab, and I will try to guide you and explain my decisions. I want to iterate that I make these videos for students at Digital Arts and Entertainment. They, those students are doing this as a first year assignment and if you're interested in yeah the best game artist education uh, check out the website digitalartsentertainment.com uh, so before me i have the model uh, imported in sketchfab i have the textures on there and it looks like this it's lit it's okay it's yeah but it doesn't have any like it's not impressive and on the other hand you can also do something like this which has considerably more uh, visual impact it's more of an oomph um, a thumbnail of this will be much more interesting more people will click it uh, and the reason for that is that it's more readable so the shapes the different shapes and the colors and so on are much easier to recognize there's more contrast between them um, you might see this if we start to zoom out a bit let's see so if we zoom out to something like this and the same thing here let's check a bit smaller see so this shape here this thing starts to sort of blend together and here we can still sort of see the individual parts and still read them see these these different beams and so on here it's a bit of a of a mess so um how did i get here well we'll start with this so this is just my um my yeah my model um i have a bit of an issue which i don't have time right now to solve and I want to finish this video um, with the uh, yeah the edited normals of the grass planes so the normals of the grass planes should like point up and slightly uh, yeah. like they should point away from the grass that they're standing on but it doesn't seem to be working and when I look at the FBX file uh, itself then that looks okay so that yeah I still have to um, troubleshoot that issue but yeah uh, that doesn't matter too much okay so first of all uh, for this style we use classic rendering um, so do that first we're gonna yeah we're gonna light our scene um, and yeah and then if we have a look at lighting, then Sketchfab actually uses these environment domes to lit these scenes and they work reasonably well, so feel free to use them. Uh, so this here is uh, this industrial room preset. Maybe one of the others is better. So I found this one has a lot of blue light. See, it makes almost the entire scene blue. Um, this one has a lot of uh, brown light which sure there's a lot of brown to bounce but the blue is way less strong so I'm not sure how they were made but it's mostly brown but it, it works then this one is a bit more yellowy and one that I found reasonably neutral was this one maybe um, but yeah you, you can sort of try a few different ones out and they do have shadows as you can see here you can change the orientation I just sort of have, have one side more lit and one side a little bit less like if the light comes straight from behind the camera then it's all the same if it's a bit at an angle and I have one lit scene and one darker scene and that's easier to again 
read the shapes um, something like this maybe it's, it's pretty good and then the back is in the shadow um, yeah okay uh, you can also use the use this these slides and you can also actually just combine them so um, this actually sort of has lights in three directions and it sort of lits up the shadow side um, a bit which yeah yeah li like you, you can sort of use this as a start and then sort of tweak it a little bit more with these lights or you can just use those lights only well now it's <laughs> not so good but um, you could also just use use these lights use like a combination of a of a directional light and a hemisphere um, something like that could also be perfectly uh, perfectly okay all right um, but let's use this to start and let me quickly uh, hide the hide the grass okay it also hides the flowers but fine um, and we can actually push it a bit more in post processing I'm gonna cover it now since I want to show it on a white uh, scene so this here is screen space aiming occlusion so aiming occlusion we know what this is screen space means that it is rendered out every frame and it just looks at sort of what's on the screen uh, and yeah that's for everything in post-processing so if you turn that on it sort of looks for the edges and it adds shadow there a subtle relatively subtle shadow but it brings out the shapes quite well so like the roof looks much more defined like this so we can use this as well um, even with a bit more intensity perhaps um, this you know like it it's not it's not it's quite it's working quite good I think like the shapes come out quite nice um, with this uh, screen space screen space aim into occlusion uh, even a little bit uh, bigger a little bit exaggerated like this perhaps um, okay and then all right so that's first thing we can do um, but here I did something more than just that so I can turn off the screen space and this like a bit of a bit of contact shadows what I actually did was I baked out um, custom custom light maps so in the materials you can find here light maps I baked out uh, custom light maps in Max, and you could also actually make a setup in Max with a sky dome and and the sun and so on and bake that out uh, but I just uh, put like a default sky dome in there um, to give me some extra yeah give me some extra contact shadows and I'll put these on now well let's uh, turn off all right so I split up my yeah I'll show it in a minute let's put them on first let's import them in uh, can I actually import multiple ones yes that works okay awesome all right so um, the bottom level here is yep bottom level um, my ground plane uses the uh, environment you see it's always on the wrong UVs since of course my normal colors are on UV 0 so these are on UV 1 and then the so the roof oops uses the roof tiles again wrong UVs like this and the sand uses environment as well 
and then the top level this section uh, yep all right so this is with with my baked aim with occlusion so it's not a massive difference like it it's darker on the bottoms and so on um, but it's it does give like a sort of these these crisp contact shadows and also um, yeah, these sort of large scale uh, things. So this this has a lot more definition than than how the scene looked at the start. Um, yeah, maybe you can skip back to the video where I first opened this this white scene. Um, but uh, yeah. So that that that's this effect from the image occlusion in Max. Like you you can go further with this. You can sort of go more in depth. Um, but I think baking baking it out is is worth it for your scene. But if you actually don't have time for it, I mean at least use the screen space image occlusion. Now you could also combine them, of course. Um, maybe use a soft large one yeah like this see so that's a combination of the sort of crisp so again if you look from far away like it looks like the the shapes come out quite nice and are well readable and so on in this sort of uh, darker area underneath the underneath this part and so on sort of yeah, like it has a, an, a nicely darker value to, to sort of move into into the depth of that scene. Um, so yeah, I, I think combination is maybe even best. Um, but let's have a look at my Max file of how I actually did it. Um, I made an entire video of it, of this process, um, quite a few years back for uh, Sketchfab. Um, yeah, if, if you are either on Sketchfab and you see the scene, well, actually, if you're on my YouTube channel, then uh, I think it's one of the most watched uh, videos. Um, so what I did was here, uh, anyway, so let me uh, show the scene. So I combined everything together in my model um, into a few different pieces. So I have the roof and the roof tiles. Um, yep, I have then uh, the top section, I have the bottom section, I have windows, I have these separate because uh, they emit light also on the, yeah, in the, okay, forgot the name of this. Uh, yeah, these, these light holder things. Um, then I have the ground plane, including the moss there. I have the leaves, and I put them separately because they don't have uh, shadows. And then I have all the stuff that uses an opacity map. That's separate too. And then I have an object that is uh, covering the bottom. Like that's just uh, so you don't see inside. Um, there's still actually if you look inside here there's still some of the beams i could cut off and some of the stones still have polys on the inside so we can save i mean i i will again i didn't have time for this and this video is important right now to make so but yeah i can go in and sort of clean that out and that would save another i don't know a few hundred polys perhaps um but that still needs to happen but yeah all right so um the roof the top floor the bottom floor and the ground floor and environment stuff um i gave them all a separate um yeah uh light light bake um that means they need two unwraps so one for the normal color and then one for the for the light map where everything is unique 
So if I go, wait, actually, let me <laughs> do this on a copy since I might want to revisit this, but I'm, I'm going to show this. So imagine it wouldn't have a light map yet, right? If, if we go to the UVs, here it is, boom, right here. Um, so th those are the roof tiles, ta -da. Um, and then I also need them all like unique. So that looks like this and here I already have it. So I can actually press abandon now because this is the result, right? How did I get this result? I'll show you. Go back to number one. Again, abandon because there's already something in number one. Let's go back to number two. And now let's move. So this will now overwrite mob channel two with was what was in mob channel one. And I'll show you. So first of all, um, I have this these shapes underneath. Wait, let's select this, this. Right, so these these parts. Um, not this. Wait, there's something. Uh, here it is. To cover my the edges, uh, not the edges, the the gaps. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So these shapes. Um, I know they're not, uh, yeah, they're like overlapping, they're not well, well unwrapped, so I did a flatten on them. These default things, wait, let's try again with maybe, I don't know exactly which setting I used, but uh, yeah, I mean it's for light map and it's hardly visible, so it's probably good enough. And then these things are probably, um, yeah, they, they're like unwrapped individually and, and good. So all I need to do now is like put place them uh, uniquely, all right? But I can simply do it with uh, with this, all right? So that that's, well, it's slightly different than the result that I showed, but this should, um, yeah, now they're all unique. Uh, yeah, and this is okay for light map. So first, um, yeah flat mapping on some of the parts that are overlapping and or too squashed or something and then the parts which are okay just uh, but that are overlapping you can just pack them all right and then of course it needs to be in this position but then you can render out the light map so I have just a sky dome here actually uh, this is slightly blue um, and yeah I just turned this on that that was basically the setting but you can go quite deeper into this with the whole light setup that you can build out uh, render out um, and if you have like an actual good render instead of the scan line um, that can help a lot too um, but I just used this the scan line so um, yeah rendering uh, render to texture or zero on the keyboard um, actually select the object you want to do this for so here um, padding always give it some more padding 8 for yeah, will probably be plenty but we use an existing channel and we use of course channel 2 All right so this is important this is where everything is laid out unique and then which one do you choose? You choose the lighting map. And then you give it a good name and I rendered them at 1K. Um, maybe test it first here and uh, also test for overlapping faces. So I test it first and applied it and if there's like black spots or something, you know, something is wrong. Uh, so, and then when everything's right, I did a 1K texture. Um, you could also, once everything is rendered, 
So this is the, these are roofs. All right, of course, all the black stuff is overlapping stuff. Um, like you could, uh, yeah, manipulate, manipulate this in Photoshop as well, like change the levels or something that might have an effect as well. Um, yeah, you could like, yeah, I mean, that it's possible to to do stuff with the with the light maps. But basically, I did this for for everything um, except for the leaves here and for the opacity stuff. Um, yeah, when when I tested, like the grass sort of seemed to go like too dark towards the bottom, and so on. like I, I sort of didn't it didn't fit. Okay, so that's uh, that gives already this result, which. Yeah, that's good. But now we should also add some colors, of course, which was in this one. But this one doesn't have any, doesn't have good lighting. All right. Um, so I also made uh, different materials. Actually, this uh, default one is a color for the bottom. I just made it so like you can't like see an awkward inside of the the building um, all right so uh, yeah basically it's pretty simple just add the texture to the diffuse um, so import textures I'll import the color texture and the opacity for the grass and this one of course uses this one um, and then bottom level and roof okay um, yeah and then I have the uh, ground plane And the uh, ground plane actually also I did this sand um, yeah it's kind of not perfectly according to the assignment but here for I have this tiling mud since I wasn't like sure how big it is now seeing it I could easily sort of put this mud in the other texture as well but okay um, and then I have the foliage so I have two materials called foliage. One is for the, yeah, this one is with the opacity. The other one are just the leaves. Um, they have the same, yeah, do they have the same material in Max? I think so. Um, and the, um, yeah, wait, let me do the, build, the windows first. So what I did for the windows, I did them separately so I can use the emissive map and I actually found that using just the emissive map or the emissive slot works quite fine uh, so if this is white it sort of puts white on top of everything but if this is black then it works yeah no specular uh, we don't have a light map so, and then we can sort of boost this a bit. See, make the windows shine. Yeah, not, not too hard. Um, especially be careful with the window on the shadow side. All right, um, and then, yeah, and then the grass. All right, so the grass, I have a bit of that issue with the, yeah, with the normals not exporting to SketchUp correctly. Um, so, this uses UV0 for the, for the color and for the opacity, um, here it uses UV1, right, so this. Um, Blending. 
uh, yeah, you can have issues with blending. I uh, think you should try, for example, can you see it? Uh, yeah, here, like sometimes you see like the plane which is actually behind it in perspective in front of it in shading. So you can fix that with mask, but mask has this kind of strange slider here. If it's set to one, it's really transparent. So you have to like slide it down and sort of have it around 0 uh, 0.5 instead. So there, around there, works best. All right. Um, so, but like I still have these dark spots and I found another way to mostly fix it and that's to use the emissive with the, the same one and then point one is a bit bright because then yeah like it's very bright in the shadow but if we set it to 0 0.5 it's reasonably okay and if you look at it like this it doesn't like it kind of fixes it, it fixes it mostly um, so I, I use this instead as a yeah as a fix before I have time to solve the normal issue with the with the grass. Um, but it's okay, I think. Um, I mean, in the whole scene, like from this whole distance, the grass is quite fine. All right. Um, so we're not here yet, since I think the scene can sort of still use some more oomph, some more push. Um, and we can do that with more post-processing. So don't be like ashamed to use a bit more post-processing. Uh, bloom is possible, can work, but tone mapping as well. So let's try bloom. <laughs> it makes the whole scene like a bit dreamy. But if we sort of lower the threshold, um, it sort of makes, meh. Yeah, it makes this brighter and the little flowers. Yeah, the flowers are, of course, since they also has a, have a bit of a missive. Um, yeah, okay, no, Bloom isn't doing that much, uh, but it's mostly the tone mapping that I use. So tone mapping, with that you can add some exposure, brightness, contrast, and saturation. So let's turn it on. And I actually, you can use linear, but I actually found the uh, Reinhardt. Um, to work quite okay. I mean, it, it it is different if you, yeah, like this, but then you have to sort of start touching the sliders a bit. So a bit more exposure, a bit more brightness, a bit of contrast, wait. I'll see it a bit, of, a bit more. S mm. No. Or maybe I did just use, I think, no, I think I left it just that linear. So just like bumping some of these values just a bit. And now it's really like fine work, but with more contrast, it does make this quite dark. I think a bit too dark, right? Th this is a natural that like if, if this scene is so lit from the sky and so on, that this would be so dark. So I actually went in the lighting and turned on these lights a bit, but let's, let's maybe tone tone them down, but like still have them sort of soften up the dark shadow. I think this is more natural now and I actually think like even these default colors and and directions work reasonably well combined with uh, this Gdansk ship shipyard building well, I mean you, you can sort of try all the others and uh, something else might work but I think this is this is like yeah not bad um, and then a last one that you could do is a bit of a very subtle vignette. Um, 
So the amount is this, right? So how, how strong, and then the wait, let's show it. The hardness is actually how sharp this edge is. So if it's soft, it actually very soft. It also makes the center. Um, it also makes the center uh, darker, and if it's hard, it it leaves the center as it is. So, of course, you have to make it <laughs> a way less dark, but mm, sort of push out since you want like the building itself. And then, of course, don't forget a nice here a nice point of view um, that will look good in show it in like a thumbnail um, so look for that a bit uh, so you get lots of clicks on sketchfab uh, and also here the background so if you have a pro account you can put an image in or otherwise a nice ish color uh most of the time oops okay uh okay an undefined error yeah okay it doesn't matter uh, i won't save it anyway but um yeah a nice nice color most of the time light background colors actually work better than um these sort of darkish darkish colors I mean they I mean it also looks looks nice now but as a thumbnail it doesn't work as well as a thumbnail uh, most of the time I mean there's definitely exceptions um, yeah and I also kind of like like it with this dark sh yeah but this is totally up to your own uh, discretion you 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 choose whichever background color you, you want to choose which uh, you think fits best with the with the theme and so on of your scene all right so i i think that's pretty much it um nice readable shapes good shadow good contact shadows good yeah if there was like a sphere in the scene it it would sort of read well um yeah and i think that's uh yeah it's a bit a bit brighter yeah maybe this is even better um, but yeah um, and this is also a good time to rewatch your texture right so the first time I, uh, I I tried it out I actually still tweaked my texture a bit and I'll I didn't sort of have the version I worked with but I do have like an older like this is an older sloppy version of the texture and then this is the version that I'm using now so obviously I have this section which is on there for a long time already and I I made the wall nicer I mean still not super nice if you look at it now but it works quite well in the scene I'll show you but it's mostly just it's a bit brighter there's more more color variation more color richness I should say like if in the wood if you look in the wood this is all like yeah the same brown color and here I sort of put a bit of green in it put a bit more orange a bit of yellow a bit yeah green here and there um, near the same thing on the rocks uh, here of course as well um, yeah so and let me show the I don't know if if I did it on on purpose but here the the wall now also uh yeah i think blends much better um than it used to um i will still i i won't upload this so i won't publish it um what i want to do is uh i actually want to add some more things to the scene um and then also one of the things i will still do i think is to actually add some geometry onto the plane with the with the texture and then like make some cuts and sort of give it a bit of a bit of um yeah relief as well but i want to add like a little uh, little shield here i think and uh, 
maybe a little store front or something yeah I'm, I'm not sure yet and also I want to fix the fix the normal map uh, issue um, but yeah I think this this as a result is <laughs> quite quite nice um, could we let's see uh, let me quickly take a screenshot like this uh, oops. Yeah, from the whole view. Um, let's put it in Photoshop. Right, and let's turn off. Let's turn off the uh, light maps. And then the sand as well. All right. Let's compare. Right, what the baked light map actually does, since it it does take like a bit of time. See how it sort of grounds everything, right? It gives like contact shadow. And it sort of gives the depth in the in the large shapes, and also like slight contact shadow in the small shapes. So I I think it's worth it. Um, it's not super essential, but yeah, for this style, I think it really brings out the shapes, and. Maybe can we cover it with screen space image occlusion? I don't think it's going to be entirely possible. Maybe with some more intensity. Yeah. I mean, you can sort of um, compensate a bit with stronger screen space, but I do think, see, this sort of makes more more sense, feels more natural. The one with the with the baked uh, one, I think that's the best result. But strong to, uh, strong screen space emit occlusion is is a is a second, and then weak screen space emit occlusion and then no screen space emit occlusion very little I mean now like that you turn both the let's also <laughs> actually combine uh, yeah um, compare it so no screen space emit occlusion and no baked emit occlusion So you see how much definition is kind of lost and how much better the, the shapes all read with the yeah with with better lighting. All right. Um if there's any questions uh yeah for the students they can reach me. They know how to reach me if uh yeah and otherwise in the comments I'll uh, yeah I might answer them. Okay, thank you for watching, and uh, yeah, this is probably the last chapter, so yeah, goodbye, and uh, have fun.